Earlier this month, Arkansas announced record low unemployment of 3.5 percent. Well, what has led to that solid number and is it as rosy as it sounds? Economist Mervyn Jebaraj with UA Walton College of Business joined me for a conversation. The state's put out a September jobs report and it shows a record low unemployment rate of 3.5 percent. Uh, Mervyn, tell me what's good, what's bad, if anything, in these numbers. You know, I'm in favor of celebrating every positive economic story out there, so record low unemployment rate is definitely worth celebrating. However, I would caution us by saying we did celebrate a record low unemployment rate last year as well, when it was 3.4% when they first announced the unemployment rate, uh, but then they subsequently revised that unemployment rate up to 3.6%, so it was no longer the record low unemployment rate. So. Uh, I would probably say it may be a little too early to celebrate the record low unemployment rate just yet. Make sure that this, re this doesn't get revised away. Uh, but I think the big difference between when we thought we had the record low unemployment rate last year and what we think might be the new record low unemployment rate this year was that last year the unemployment rate was going down because more people were entering the workforce and finding work. This year, the record low unemployment rate is almost entirely because people are leaving the workforce because they can't find work. So the unemployed, the number of people unemployed is going down, but the number of people in the overall labor force is going down as well, which means that people aren't leaving the unemployed category and going to the employed category. They're leaving the unemployed category and just not looking for work anymore, which means they're not counted as part of the labor force. So. Every single month since 2018 started, from January of 2018, uh, the labor force shrunk has about 0.1% every single month, which puts our employment to population ratio, which is the measure of uh, the people in the labor force divided by all the people above the age of 16. Uh, that's now in the low 57%. So it used to be 58% last year. It used to be 60% before the last recession, and we're headed in the wrong direction, not in the right direction in terms of uh, the number of people that are in the labor force in Arkansas, and that is a very important concern. So yes, the headline unemployment rate is at its record low, but it isn't going, the unemployment rate isn't going down for the right reasons anymore. It's really going down because people are unable to look, or people are looking for work, not finding it, and then leaving the labor force. So I think that is a bit concerning looking at this report. So as a follow-up, are we, are we seeing people retiring that would account for uh, some of this? Baby boomers are retiring, they're exiting the workforce. Do, do we think that retirement accounts for a chunk of what we're seeing? I think it does account for a chunk of it. Now, when you look at what that employment population ratio is, it is everybody that's in the labor force divided by everybody that's above the age of 16. And that you know statistic, that metric hasn't really changed since we started measuring it. Uh, but a lot of Employment dynamics have really changed since we started counting everybody uh, above the age of 16 as being part of the workforce. So on both ends, there are people that are no longer in the workforce for perfectly legitimate reasons. So baby boomers are retiring. We want them to enjoy their retirement. They shouldn't really be in the workforce. That's great. People are about, you know, at about 16 previously participated in the labor force in much larger numbers than they do right now. They tend to be uh, pursuing more academic pursuits these days. A lot of them are going to college, so they're not in the labor force, and that's fine as well as young people are getting uh, or attaining higher educational levels, and that's fine as well. But even if you look at the employment uh, rate for people between 25 and 55, which we would call the prime age population, they're really not ready to retire yet. And at 25, they've had you know a decent amount of time to complete at least a bachelor's degree, if not a master's degree at that point. Uh, even if you look at that particular uh, prime age workforce between 25 and 55, they're participating in the labor force at much lower levels than they have in previous economic expansions, uh, the expansions that we had in the 2000s, as well as the expansions that we had in the 1990s. So the labor force participation rate, even if you account for the baby boomers and young people going to college, is still lower. Hearing a lot about wages this election cycle, particularly in some political races, uh, a lot, I hear a lot of political spin on this subject. Uh, I want to know what the real numbers are telling us about wages. You know, wage growth in the United States has been disappointing and can, remains disappointing. It has been disappointing for a very, very long period of time. The last time we had any real wage growth was in the economic expansion that we saw in the 90s. 
Uh, back then, wage growth was much, much higher than where it is right now. So when you adjust for inflation, uh, the current wage growth is about 1.1%. That's comparing September of 2018 with September of 2017, which is the highest it's been since about 2016. So uh, if you think back to from 2016 until about now, we never, the wage growth in the United States adjusted for inflation on a year-over-year -year basis did not cross 1%. The last time it got above 2% even was between 2014 and 2015, which is the last time we really saw GDP growth uh, go above 3% in a, on a consistent basis. So uh, we're really not, in spite of these record low unemployment rates, not just here in Arkansas, but for the nation as well, you know, last year the nation as a whole averaged about 4% unemployment rate, which is really, really low. It's a little bit lower than that right now, but even in spite of all that, we're not seeing uh, any sustained wage growth. And it's good that we've seen one month so far of 1% uh, wage growth adjusted for inflation, but that's just not enough. There is a minimum wage proposal on the Arkansas ballot this November that would raise uh, the minimum wage in Arkansas to $11 an hour by 2021. It'd be incrementally over the next few years. Uh, tell me, do you think this is good public policy? Well, so, you know, we've talked about lower wages and, you know, so there are a variety of different ways to address that. We think wages are lower because, you know, productivity hasn't risen, because there is the slack in employment, uh, labor force participation is not nearly as high. And so various states have tried to improve the minimum wage to see if that improves uh, the overall wage level in the, uh, for workers. Uh, now, Arkansas has already raised the minimum wage. We're currently at $8.50, which stands higher than the federal minimum wage. Uh, but, you know, it, the usefulness of using minimum wage as a way to address uh, this longer-term problem of wage stagnation is a little bit limited, in, at least in our context, as it relates to this ballot proposal. I think when you think about how you would set minimum wage policy, uh, which is somewhat a blunt instrument for the state as a whole. Uh, you know, a lot of experience, at least from economic research, tends to show that whether there is slight positive or slight negative effects from uh, minimum wage increases, most of those uh, deal with minimum wages that are set at about, you know, between 40 and 55, 56 percent of the median hourly wage. In that particular economy, the median hourly wage uh, is not really high in Arkansas, as you might imagine, because we have a much lower cost of living here. Uh, so when you do eventually get to $11 minimum wage in Arkansas in 2021, even if I was to generously assume that wages went up 2% every year between now and 2021, the uh, minimum wage of $11 would cover about uh, 68 or so percent of the median wage, median hourly wage in Arkansas, and that is outside of at least the economic literature and what we understand is non-distortionary. So if we think about small minimum wage increases don't really boost employment or shrink employment, and so it's fine to do those. Uh, at $11 an hour, only Northwest Arkansas and Central Arkansas would have a minimum wage that is around that 50 percent of median wage. Uh, the rest of the state as a whole would be around 68% of the median wage. And places like Hot Springs, for example, that are dependent on the tourism economy and hence have a lot of low-wage jobs in the hospitality industry, that minimum wage would cover close to 78% of uh, the uh, uh, median hourly wage in Hot Springs. And so in those cases, all of the economic literature that shows that there isn't a whole lot of positive or negative effects from the minimum wage increase uh, deals with minimum wage increases that are between 40 and 60 percent of the median wage, not uh, dealing with uh, medium wage, uh, minimum wage increases that are, you know, 68 and 78 percent of the median wage. So I think it's very likely that what we have right now is roughly around uh, that good median, uh, about half the median wage in Arkansas. Uh, but when we eventually get to $11 in 2021, unless wage growth dramatically picks up between now and 2021, uh, regions that are not Northwest Arkansas and Central Arkansas might see a lot of labor force distortions because of that high minimum wage.